If you're a music producer that has historically struggled with sounding overly digital or flat, almost like your music has no life or energy to it, a lot of times the solution for that could simply be saturation. Just listen to this mix without saturation. Yeah, yeah. And then listen to the same mix with saturation applied. Yeah, yeah. The difference is night and day, right? In fact, I think saturation is the number one biggest difference between an amateur mix that sounds like it was made in a bedroom studio versus sounding like something that was made in a multi-million dollar studio. And the reason saturation is so important to your mix is because saturation is literally the addition of harmonic frequencies to your music. So what does that mean? That means that if you played a B note, played at the frequency of 250 hertz, saturation would apply additional frequencies above that note at 500, 1000, 2000, and so on. And by the way, it does the same thing below the original note. This is actually why we recommend that you always do subtractive EQ after saturation. That way you aren't cutting away frequencies that you're about to add back in regardless. Now, because you know that saturation adds harmonic frequencies, where I think it gets really interesting is selecting saturation plugins or flavors. This is why a plugin like the Decapitator, for example, emulates five different classic saturation modes that engineers have been using for decades. The E setting stands for EMI, and it's a bright, zesty saturation flavor known for use on pop records. The N stands for Neves, and it's a fuzzy, warm flavor that I think sounds best on guitars. Of course, there are tons of different saturation flavors and plugins out there, and part of finding or developing your sound as an artist is likely going to go hand in hand with finding the types of saturation that you love and the types of saturation that sound great to your ears.